My dad really likes to tell stories, especially about like family history and stuff like that. I knew about my Nana being raised in an orphanage because her mom had a mental breakdown after, shortly after her husband died and um, had to be hospitalized. I knew about my mom and her mother when she was growing up suffered greatly from uh, menopause. So essentially at that time in the 60s, like people didn't know what to do with women and their menopause and they just thought that they were going crazy. And some people do actually um, go off the rails a little bit as it were when that happens because of hormones. And my grandmother was one of them. She also was hospitalized and went through electric shock therapy I uh, got addicted to pills, uh, antipsychotics. So I guess I grew up thinking it was in my blood and I always feared it. My first sort of jolt into therapy itself and how to deal with mental illness was experiencing my older sister's anorexia firsthand. We had to go to family therapy because um, it was on recommendation. It was not fun. <laughs> I had a very, it left a bad taste in my mouth when it came to therapy because I th thought I was, I was too young to really understand it. I remember the drives home and how awful they were because we had just let it all hang out in front of somebody and now we had to like take it home with us. Fast forward into being a teenager myself and I started getting involved with the wrong people romantically as well and it got to a point where I had become known for choosing um, abusive partners. I was <clears throat> in like my second year at theater school and I was with bad beau numero 100 or something like that, not bad, but another bad dude who was far too old for me, a drug dealer, um, would give me you know, drugs basically whenever I wanted. I was using far too often, leading this kind of double life. And I was seeing myself fall down this rabbit hole when I found out that I was pregnant. And I had to get an abortion because I didn't want to be with this person. Um, and, I, and I knew I couldn't give this kid the life that I wanted it to, especially with this person being their father. So I um, got an abortion and he lost it and revealed to me that he had been hiding a Percocet addiction the entire time that we were together. Proceeded to, uh, I guess, um, detox at my apartment. It was my first apartment out of home. It got so bad that we broke up and the breakup was ugly and violent and it got me kicked out of my apartment and I had to go crawling back to my parents. I continued with that pattern <laughs> of bad men uh, and it wasn't until I left for Europe with an ex-fiance and came back, that will tell you how that relationship went, that I realized that I had a problem. I was still really scared about going to therapy. So I saw this uh, ad online for this uh, app. The first person that I spoke to was really helpful and eventually I couldn't really afford it anymore, so I stopped doing it. Um, and then I started realizing that <sighs> therapy didn't have to be the only way that I could seek refuge and f find answers and clarity in where my head was at at times. I finally came full circle and I'm now starting to s seek 
therapy again and and how I can manage that on a financial level now or that I'm back to a place where I think I can. And um, most importantly, actually taking the time to be by myself, not with a partner, um, just on my own to figure out why, why I've created this pattern and why I can't seem to be by myself. I'm starting to get over that, that fear of, of my own mental state and this kind of um, fable myth history of my bloodlines being at the demise constantly of their own mental health. So I think I'm getting there <laughs> one day. Mm -hmm.